Hey and welcome to Hank's True Barbecue. This is my smoker Rude Boy and I just finished refurbishing the trailer, rebuilding the trailer completely because I wanted it to look better and adjust the working height. So this is a quick walkthrough of what I did. Perfect! modifying it was that I wanted a different look I wanted it to look more instead of like a big offset smoker placed on a trailer I wanted it to look like a complete unit like more old school look so I wanted to change that also I wanted to drop the whole thing down because it was quite tall I had to use a even though I'm tall I still had to use a small ladder just to get up and work the doors and get the meat in and out so I wanted to make it more convenient of course so I dropped this one six inches but also when modifying the trailer I rebuilt it quite a bit to get the structure I want and also to get the look I want I thought I'd showcase my custom build today which is my offset smoker called Rude Boy now this whole story started with me doing what I think most Americans do that want to build an offset smoker you go out into the woods you find an old abandoned propane tank, pull it back home and start building. Actually, I did the same thing. I found a really large tank. The only issue was that it was pressure tested to 16 bars, which meant it was like very, very thick material. And thickness means weight. So I basically, I couldn't get it home without getting a forklift and I wasn't interested in getting a forklift. But I kept looking at it, walked past it and I thought, Hey, I'm an engineer. I can build a tank like that. Same size, save everything, but a lot less weight. So that's when my brain went to work. So I started building one, actually. I took the exact same measurements, but I figured the good thing about having a thickness is that it retains heat quite well. Also, I live in Stockholm, Sweden. It's quite cold. So I needed this one to run all through the winter without being sensitive to rain or wind or anything. So I thought, let's build an insulated smoker. Let's like over-engineer this stuff. So that's what I did. So this is a fully insulated smoker, firebox, food chamber all the way out. And I'll explain exactly how I built it so we can follow along. Now back here is the firebox, as you can see. Uh, put some nice handles on it because this is actually detachable. I'll get to that in a moment. Put a nice firebox door here. As you can see, there are no vents at all. I believe in what I call a free flow smoker. So I run this with the door wide open. So I regulate temps by putting in more or less splits. That way I get a maximum clean burn and the best flavor as I see it. This is four millimeter steel, but there are two boxes, one box in another, and then 20 millimeters of airspace all around it. So fully insulated firebox which is really, really good. Now in the firebox, every now and then you just want to do a quick cook or a, a, a reverse sear using really high heat. So what I did was actually fabricated a small table, which I used to put right over the burning logs. And that way I get like crazy high heat, which is perfect for searing a big steak. Let me show you a quick clip here of when I did a club steak in the firebox. Now just a few words about the firebox connection to the fire chamber. As you can see I put a felt gasket here. This is a Kamado Joe replacement actually. The whole point of not welding these two together is I wanted to have thermal decoupling between the firebox and the food chamber. Now granted this is insulated but it still gets hot and as you all know metal transfers heat very very efficiently. And the one thing I wanted to avoid is having the risk of a grease fire in the food chamber. So I figured if this one is thermally decoupled, there is very little risk of the grease catching fire when it's dripping down. So how do you build a tank like that? Well, this is where I had to get technical. 
Now I needed to build it from the inside out, so I built a big wooden frame, as you can see here, what I call a jig. So a full-size wooden frame. And then when I had that one, uh, since it was just me, uh, I had to be smart about how I built it. So I put some metal around it, like built the cylinder from inside out, kind of like rolled it up, if, as you can see in the pictures here. Uh, put some straps around to hold it in place, and then I could start tap welding it to seal it up. After that, I put on a skeleton. So uh, basically using angle bars or angle iron all the way running all the way the length of the smoker. Now if we open it up you can see I've done some removable shelves here. This is a top shelf I can easily take it out. The bottom shelves here slide left and right so depending on what I need. Looking back towards the firebox you can see the second shelf and some more shelves in the bottom so everything is movable and adjustable. Now what you see is an 18 pound brisket and it looks rather lonely in there so you can see there's plenty of capacity. Like last time I cooked I had nine briskets, 25 pork bellies in it, which is good. That's plenty more than the family. I cook for a few hundred people at a time. If I use just briskets, full, fill it up properly, I think I can fit 14 briskets in here, which is really nice. If you look at the smoke coming out of this one, it's invisible completely, not even blue. So that's exactly what you're looking for. Now, we start from the back. What I did was I welded everything to the actual trailer, so now it never moves. Before I could actually take it off, which I never did because it weighs too much. But anyhow, I didn't have to strap it to the trailer when driving. This is way better because now it's permanently fixed. Also, like I said, I dropped it six inches, which makes quite a difference for working height. That also meant I could remove the handles that were here, etc. So it's all good. I changed the door I'm going to show you because I wanted it to be, well, same size but smaller when working, working the fire. Here you can see the firebox door. Before this was one, just opening it like that. And that's real convenient because I always, I don't have a vent here. I always run it with the door open. But every now and then it's quite windy. So I figured splitting it in two really helps because then I can leave it like that and still the wind doesn't affect the fire. But as you can see, I made it quite sturdy. Now, now this is new and this is old, so I, I want that old, I guess you could call it rustic, but rusty looks, I'm waiting for these to catch up. I put a, some grates down here because I figured it doesn't make sense to have a wooden floor right in front of the fire. Now as for the wooden floor, I put in some oak floors, solid oak floors. I really wanted this rustic look and I figured that's going to be a nice touch. Most smokers are just built with metal, all metal, but I thought this adds a nice touch to the whole look. And uh, speaking of styling, I figured I might as well make my own fenders for the tires and put some baby moon caps in to make it look more old school. Now, as you can see, the fenders are just a bit large because I wanted to put on bigger tires, but due to the heavy load and everything and the air in the tire being the one bearing the weight, I couldn't modify the size of the tire. So that's why the fenders look just a bit big. I'm waiting for those to catch up and become a bit more rusty like the rest of the smoker. As for the handles, well, just took some oak splits and drilled a long hole because this size handle fits my hand really well. Gonna add a bit of polish, of course, they're a bit rough now, but I like the look of it. Now, moving forward, I figured counterweights is really nice for the big doors, but instead of doing the traditional welded uh, counterweight I added an old school rope and a pulley and we're gonna move around on the back so you can see the counterweight I'm using but that helps of course when opening the doors the smokestacks the same it's been on there for two years now and it's really delivering I really like this construction I'm a big fan of fat stack smokers and this one's really nice uh, it creates that perfect clean burning uh, fire that adds an amazing flavor Moving around the back, you can see my counterweights here. Again, I wanted that old school look, so rope and pulley and some old bags filled with rocks. So I like that. Just a nice touch, but this is a good solid smoker. It's been running for two years now, and I cook quite a lot of food for a few hundred people at a time. So I like it. Here you can see the wooden floor on the back side also. Overall, I have to say I'm really happy with how the trailer turned out. The whole unit looks a lot more like an integral unit, like a traditional offset smoker. I got the working height down. 
It was a fun build now, two years after constructing it, it was really nice to add those finishing touches. And another thing I did was to be able to tip the smokestack back, so when I'm driving or taking this to a big event, I can just hold it back easily, just un remove the bolts and just tip it backwards. Alright, that's a quick walkthrough of my smoker and the modification to the trailer. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys next episode.